Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the all-new iPhone 14. This is Apple's least exciting upgrade this year, as it's not a big jump from the iPhone 13, but I thought we'd unbox it and then take a look at what's new. Now, it has the same price at $799 and goes up to $1,099. However, if you're at $1,099, I'd probably jump to the Pro model. It comes in 128, 256, and 512 gigabyte models, just like last year, and comes in some new colors. This is the new blue color, we also have a new purple, and then the product red color is slightly different. Now, this whole video is being filmed with an iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max from the rear-facing cameras. So let me know what you think of that, and it's in HDR, so if you're using maybe a browser other than Chrome or Safari, make sure you check it out there or use the YouTube app on a compatible monitor to see it in HDR. Otherwise, you'll just see it in normal resolution. Now, let's go ahead and unbox this. Now, this is the least exciting phone this year, so we'll go ahead and pull the tab off here. And we'll do one more. And then we can open up the box. So we'll go ahead and open this up. And there's the new blue color. And so as you can see, here's the new blue. And let's take a look at what's in the box. So of course we have our normal paperwork and this year it's an eSIM. So it's going to give you an information about having an eSIM that says you no longer need a physical SIM. You have of course got your normal information and then you have an apple sticker now of course you have your usb-c to lightning cable and that's what we'll have probably until iphone 15. now let's go ahead and put the cable back in the box and if you need a charger that's where the official channel partner of this channel anchor comes in who's actually sponsored this video if you're looking for an ac adapter for your iphone the anchor nano 3 is 70 percent smaller than apple's 30 watt charger it features gallium nitride technology and a foldable plug to reduce the size and increase its efficiency but it can still output 30 watts so you can charge more devices including your iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, and MacBook Air all with one charger. There's five fresh finishes to match your style, Aurora White, Phantom Black, Misty Blue, Lilac Purple, and Natural Green. Anchor also has a new 541 USB-C to Lightning and 543 USB-C to USB-C cable that are the first to use bio-based materials in a cable. Anchor is the first company to use renewable materials including sugarcane and corn to construct the exterior of the cables and the cables have been proven in a lab to withstand up to 20,000 bends, making it more durable than your typical TPE-based cables. I'll leave a link to both of them in the description so you can check them out. Now as you can see, here's the blue color. It looks really good this year it's sort of a slate blue and then on the right hand side of course it's aluminum on the regular model we have our power sleep wake button and then of course our millimeter wave antenna if you have that where you live around the bottom side of the phone of course we have our lightning port along with our microphone and speaker and then on the other side we don't have a sim card tray this year but we do have our volume buttons and our silent switch Nothing on the top, and then on the back, it doesn't really look any different, but we do have updated cameras. To compare with the other model, the iPhone 13 from last year, they're very, very similar. They're a little bit different when it comes to weight, so the iPhone 14 is lighter at 6.07 ounces or 172 grams. You don't really feel it though as the iPhone 13 is 6.14 ounces or 174 grams, so it's very, very slight. On the side here, they're pretty much identical in every way. In fact, I showed in the case video, the cases would fit. So the cases fit from the 14 to the 13, so you wouldn't have to buy a new one necessarily. Now you'll see the front is the same. In fact, the display is exactly the same this year. Now inside we have emergency SOS via satellite, and we also have crash detection. We also have the photonic engine, which we'll talk more about later, and then the battery is updated to 3,279 milliamp hours this time around. So it's good for about an extra hour of video playback. So 3227 last year in the iPhone 13, not a big difference there. Now let's turn it on and see what it looks like outside, and I'll get it set up wait for it to boot up and like I said it's the same display as last year so that means it goes up to 1200 nits in HDR video or regular about a thousand or 800 it's 2532 by 1170 at 460 pixels per inch now I'll go ahead and get this set up and we'll take a look at what's new I did a separate setup video fully with the iPhone 14 Pro Max moving over the eSIM and more so if you're in the United States it's eSIM only like I mentioned so let me get this set up and then we'll continue 
Now, before we unlock the phone, this year, Apple has actually not included Wi-Fi 6E yet, but we do have a bump up to Bluetooth 5.3. We also have 5G, but not CDMA. And so this gets the same A15 Bionic, but with an extra GPU core this year. So really very similar to last year's Pro models is basically what we have. Now with the front camera, we actually have an upgraded 12 megapixel camera, so that's a nice thing. It's actually the same as basically what you get in the pros, 12 megapixel f1.9 with 4K60 and the Photonic engine. On the back, we of course have dual camera setups, and again, these are upgraded. The main camera is an f1.5, up from 1.6, and the ultra wide is an f2.4. And we'll check out some of those new modes in a moment. But let's unlock the phone and right away I actually have a software update. So that's something you'll see if we go into general and then about. Now you can see we have the same build number we had before with 20A357. And so immediately this has a software update that fixes a few things. Again, I showed this in the iPhone 13 Pro video, but if we go to general and then software update, you'll see we have an update where it fixes iMessage and FaceTime where it may not complete activation. Photos may appear soft when zooming in landscape orientation on a 14 Pro Max and enterprise single sign-on apps may fail to authenticate. Now let's go back and take a look at some of the wallpapers since we have some new ones here. We'll add a custom or a new wallpaper, scroll down and then go over in collections and you'll see here these are the new wallpapers this is for midnight then we have starlight red blue and then purple so here's the new blue one we'll just add that quick we'll set it up hit done and now we have the new wallpaper and i'll link that in the description now the display this year goes up to a thousand nits or 1200 nits in hdr video the same as last year and that means it's half the brightness outdoors of the new pro model so if you're in a very bright situation you'll see it looks fine now but you may want to consider the pro models just for that additional brightness of course we have pwm still so it's the same display if flickering of the display bothers your eyes that's something to keep in mind but this year they've been great the past couple years where they don't seem to bother many people's eyes but that flickering of the display to control brightness is something that's bothered my eyes in the past and it hasn't especially with the 13 and 14 series now additionally we have some new camera modes in the settings you're not going to find much of a difference here basically all the same things hdr up to 4k 60. However, in the camera itself, we have some new modes. So you'll see here, there's a new action mode button. This will use 4K resolution and scale that down to stabilize the video. So let's take a look at that. So as I'm running in my backyard, just across the yard, you can see the difference between unstabilized footage on the left and stabilized footage on the right. So I think it looks pretty good. It's definitely useful if you really have a shaky situation, you need to handhold your phone. Now also we have new cinematic modes that go up to 4K. So we now have 4K, 24 and 30 for an option where before we didn't have 4K at all. So let's take a look at that. So here's the iPhone 14's forward facing camera in 4K 30 cinematic mode. So you should see it sort of blur the background around my hair and and some of the edges are a little bit fuzzy. I think it could use a little bit more improvement there, but overall it's very impressive. It's great that it's 4K this year. And as I look over there, it should focus away and then focus back on my face. So we'll have to see what it's like after I actually watch this video. But overall, I think it's a nice improvement and it's great that this gets the same quality as the pro cameras as well. So that's the iPhone 14, not a huge upgrade this year, but it is a nice bump if maybe you're upgrading from an older phone maybe an iPhone 10R or older. Otherwise, for $10.99, I would probably opt for the Pro model. If you have an iPhone 13, I don't know that I'd upgrade, but I'll have to test it a little bit further. Let me know what you think of the iPhone 14. I'm recording with its front-facing camera in 4K HDR now. And if you have any other questions, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.